Hello, my name is Professor Mike Holmes, um, and if you've accessed the Observe GP platform, you might recognise me as Dr. Michaels from Consultation Video 3. Now, we filmed my video for Observe GP back in November 2019, and the world then was a very different place. Since then, we've received a lot of really good questions about what it's been like to work in general practice during the COVID-19 pandemic. And in this video, I'm just going to explain a little bit about my work over the past few months and try to answer some of those questions. What I would suggest is that you pay close attention to the themes, topics and terminology used. And if you have access to Observe GP, then hopefully you should recognise some of them. So a core reality of medicine worldwide is to consider how patients access healthcare. During the pandemic, one of our biggest challenges has been how to maintain access to general practice whilst keeping patients and staff safe. So this has meant changing the way we've always done things and rapidly introducing innovation. These changes have been necessary to, to minimise the risk of exposure to the virus for both our patients and our staff. And we've tried to prioritise, adapt and evolve as quickly as we could. There has been a steady stream of NHS guidance for us to understand, implement and communicate to both our patients and staff. And it's been really good to see how general practice has been agile in the way that it's responded to these challenges. Now, throughout the pandemic, evidence has emerged about risk factors for COVID-19. And we've tried to use this to determine who within our teams are at high, medium and low risk in order to safeguard their health and protect them from the virus. So some of the factors that we've seen have included age, ethnicity, weight, coexisting long-term conditions, and just being male. Staff who have been deemed using various risk assessment tools to be at high risk have not seen patients face to face and have been working from home, talking to patients over the phone and via video consultations. Medium risk staff have seen patients face to face but have not seen high risk patients and the low risk staff have been able to see all patients in all environments, including at our hot sites, which I'll come back to a little bit later. Many practices, mine included, have introduced something called total triage. So we did talk about triaging on the Observe GP platform. And instead of patients booking directly into face to face appointments, they've been encouraged to book often through an online portal for a telephone or a video consultation. So what happens is that um, the clinicians have then called the patient back, had a consultation over the phone or by video, and also patients have had the opportunity to send in photographs if that would help, for example, of skin lesions or rashes. And then that's enabled us together to come to a decision about whether we can offer advice over the phone or if that patient needs to be seen face to face. One of the things you'll remember from Observe GP is that the patient's history is key in making a diagnosis and a shared management plan. So it's possible to have a really good conversation with a patient over the phone and feel confident in your shared treatment plan. Now we would always consider safety netting in these situations and again we've discussed that on the Observe GP platform just so patients know what to do if things don't go as expected. And I think it's always important to remember that during triaging patients we've always had the opportunity to offer a face-to-face -face consultation. Now where a patient clearly describes symptoms consistent with COVID, they were then signposted to call 111 and then they would be posted on, signposted on to further care. If there was uncertainty that symptoms may be attributable to another cause, 
then patients could be invited to our hot sites where we, where we, we use those sites to see higher risk patients and it allowed us to make an assessment in a safe environment. Now, during the pandemic, we also considered and supported our most vulnerable patients, those patients who were asked to shield and stay in their homes um, throughout the period of the pandemic. Now, this includes patients, for example, who've had solid organ transplants, who are receiving chemotherapy, or who have a suppressed immune system for a variety of reasons. Uh, the patients were identified with us working in collaboration with the NHS and with our hospitals. And then in general practice, we checked those patients against our own registered lists and added further patients that we felt were vulnerable. So these patients received support from us and from our teams, as well as a team of NHS volunteers. And that was designed to ensure that those patients were aware of the support that was available to them, made sure that they were receiving their medication and any other care that they needed. And that was really important because they were and are the most vulnerable on our patient lists and they're understandably very worried about their own healthcare risk. Now our day-to-day -day work of course has been changed significantly by the need to wear personal protective equipment or PPE. So when I'm seeing patients I've been wearing a mask, goggles, gloves, a gown or an apron, and scrubs, which is very different to normal. And we've had guidance from Public Health England, and that's helped us understand when to wear PPE and how to put it on and take it off safely. We've also been concerned about the supply of PPE, and we've been monitoring how much we have in stock in order to ensure that supplies meet our needs. A core value of general practice is compassion, that desire to want to help people. And another core ethical pillar of healthcare is to do no harm to our patients, so-called non-maleficence. And that can sound straightforward not to do, not to want to do any harm, but often it's not. Our patients have understood the pressure and workload that practices have faced whilst focusing on COVID-19 and their outpouring of support, kindness, and worry for our well-being has been overwhelming. But this support, together with the fear that they may contract the virus during an appointment, has led to the perception by some patients that they should not or could not come to see us. Now, there has to be a balance found between minimising the risk of exposure to the virus, whilst continuing to provide care, to monitor long-term conditions, and to ensure that patients don't deteriorate or that we don't miss potentially new and serious symptoms. Throughout the pandemic, we've tried to ensure that patients can access our services. We've communicated that by telephone, text, social media and online platforms. The fact that we're still available. But despite this, we have seen a reduction in referrals for specialist care. One of our key challenges is to ensure that the public know general practice is accessible and that they should present to us if they have healthcare concerns. Now also during the pandemic, as GPs, we've had a real focus on patients in care homes, which, as you can imagine, are some of our most vulnerable patients to the impact of COVID-19. We've been using remote technology to monitor and speak to patients and staff in care homes. And one important step that general practice has led was to ensure that all patients in care homes had a personalised, advanced care plan, which described their wishes if they became ill or contracted the virus. As a group of people, patients in care homes are usually frail and vulnerable. And if they face life-threatening illnesses, we need to ensure that they, would, that they know what would happen and that they've had a part in deciding what would happen in advance. We need to know where and how 
they would like to receive care. These conversations have been difficult conversations to have over the phone or via video, but they were absolutely critical so that we could deliver person-centered care for all our patients at all times. Now, as a GP, I must continually reflect on my work and reflection isn't always easy. Over the last few months, we have worried for our patients who are your family and friends whilst also sharing the same anxiety and worry for our own loved ones my colleagues have lost relatives and are experiencing the shock and pain of grief and i like so many people around the country have been unable to see my elderly parents during lockdown my children have been off school um, but i do feel fortunate to have had some level of normality by being able to go to work. But I've also had some flexibility that I've been able to work from home and spend some additional time with my family during this difficult period. So I want to end this video by recognising and sharing my respect for our colleagues working under immense pressure on the front line in hospitals and in general practice but also in care homes, both here and abroad, and to the GPs and healthcare workers who've tragically lost their lives to COVID-19. This has been an incredibly difficult time, but one during which I fully appreciated the value of the whole of the NHS, of colleagues in social care, in care homes, our volunteers, all primary care colleagues, and of course, that valuable partnership we have with our patients. Thank you for watching this video and I wish all of you the best of luck with your application to medical school.